Hi everyone. So uh, somebody asked me if I would uh, do a video about a quick in the moment way to reduce stress. And uh, in case for those of you who are wondering if you're seeing this little owie here, it's because I bonked my head a couple weeks ago and it's not, uh, it's not the Tuma. So, um, but at any rate, uh, let's talk a little bit about like some of the, the best thing in the moment is to be well prepared, obviously. So exercise, meditate, eat right, get plenty of sleep and, uh, you know, try to have a good social circle with other people, serve the community. All of these things are good ways to just keep your baseline stress level down so that if something stressful does come, you're going to be okay. You'll be able to manage it much more easily. Um, but obviously that sort of, that doesn't really answer the question, but it does sort of let you know, okay, just always keep lifestyle in mind. And that's usually the, the best, the best thing you can do uh, over the long term to make sure that you're healthy and um, not only you're healthy, but the people around you and that you love and care about are healthy as well. Um, but as far as getting something more in the moment, if it's, if it's more acute, more, more immediate, what should you do? Well, um, and this uh, recently came out in a Harvard study, I think it was, that it's kind of one of the more well-known stress reduction techniques that people um, can do. It's really just to literally breathe out longer than you breathe in. Um, I think it was a hypnotist once, I think it was in college, and a hypnotist called it, a, called it an LSD breath, long, slow, and deep breath. <laughs> Um, so, and that's pretty simple, right? So, um, the basic way that I've learned it, I mean, I've learned that this technique is, goes back to, um, Raja yoga, uh, but it's just to basically, but, and it's been much more well studied in this version, in Western versions to not even no other fancy, uh, technique other than to just breathe in. And, you know, this is going to vary based on lung capacity. I could just tell you well, do it for this count and then that count, but I want you to modify that both A, first and foremost, according to your doctor's advice and, cons and consultation, but B, you know, knowing your uh, own lung capacity and how long actually can you do this for. If you, if you pass out doing this, it's because you did not listen to A, okay? Um, but if you're, if you're gonna sidestep that, my general advice is know your body, know about what you're capable of. Don't do any of this while driving because you don't, you, you should be a little bit stressed out if you're driving, for example, or anything else where you're, you're, you're in motion and you're at risk of physical injury, um, which is not to say that you're going to be, it's just, you know, life is full of risks. So at any rate, so a good rule of thumb might be, let's say, to go with an inhalation count of four. In other words, you just count to four in your mind while you're inhaling. It'd be tough to do that while you're, uh, you know, I suppose, I suppose, you know, the, the real, the real talented among you would be able to both inhale and say something audible at the same time, which is, I mean, it's possible. It's just doesn't sound good. <laughs> um, so inhale and in your mind, or maybe if you hear a ticking clock or something like that, or you put a metronome app on your phone, you know, if you want to be con that consistent, you just inhale for the count of four. So hold for four, and then exhale for eight. Much easier to count when you're exhaling. Um, so the reason, again, just reiterating, you're inhaling longer than you are. Um, you're inhaling uh, for, you're exhaling, excuse me, you're exhaling longer than you're inhaling. So why is this? Well, I think there's uh, something, it's sort of like a way to hijack your endocrine system, your, you know, the hormones that, that rush through your body that, you know, can cause stuff like fight or flight or whatever. Um, naturally, if, you know, there's some kind of stressor, we tend to, the body needs to gear up. And it's very important for the immediate response for you, to, for your body to inhale, 
so that you can do whatever you need to do. If that means run away, if that means, you know, fight off a horrible monster or whatever the case may be, um, you need to get into action somehow. But if the next, but, it, it, you know, conversely, you know, when you're calming down, we tend to, you know, if the, the trouble's over, <sighs> we tend to sigh like that, right? So the trick to this technique is that it seems to work regardless of whether or not you're just naturally having that emotional reaction based on the fact that the threat is gone, or if you are, um, if you just do it consciously, if you are forcing yourself, if you, if you're making a conscious effort to actually breathe with a longer exhalation than your inhalation. So there are different ways to modify this. Um, all, all different sorts of ways. One of the one of the older and simpler ones is to do alternate nostril breathing. So I'm using this. I, I learned this technique from Jason Louvre, and I'm not giving away the store. This is in a lot of other manuals. So, um, but I I use my um, ring finger. This isn't the other finger you're thinking of. Uh, this is the ring finger and my thumb to you know go on either side of my nostrils. Obviously, if you have a nose uh, ring in or a nose stud, this is going to be more complicated and maybe much more painful. So think ahead <laughs> and plan ahead and decide if that's for you. But what I do is um, obviously you blow your nose first as best you can. And, um, you know, I just go in one in one nostril. Hold. And then out the other nostril. Okay, and then I re would reverse it, you know, just go in through this one, hold, and then out through that one. Um, one of the, uh, if you're into chakras, um, I mean, they're into you. <laughs> um, if you're into chakras, then uh, one of the thing, the techniques that I got, it's a relatively gentle, but I think this is probably worth sharing. Um, it was actually at the end of a very advanced ritual, but this technique is so very simple, I'm fine sharing it, and I think every everybody can benefit from it. Um, obviously, do all if you're going to do these tech, you know, these techniques that involve chakras or energy work, always balance it with the grounding video, and I have that up on my website or on the YouTube uh, channel, I should say. Um, but one of the things that um, in in the technique that Jason Louvre teaches is he says, you know, concentrate on your third eye when you're doing this. I actually got a modified technique that says that, you know, from, from the divine, it says, you know, go, you know, concentrate on the third eye, but imagine it like this is like looking into like a telescope. So it's like your, your mind is like literally looking through that first lens of a telescope, that, that initial one that your eyes held up against. And then the telescope itself is much more uh, your heart, right? So it's like you're sort of, you have to sort of like imagine like a, a Klein bottle almost, if you are if you know what that is, K-L-E-I-N bottle. Um, but at any rate, it's, it's just imagine a nice little loop. So it's like you're looking through this third eye and it's actually peering down through your heart. Your heart is actually the like an apparatus, it's the tool. And then it's, the heart is actually pointing not back up to your third eye, but it's actually pointing up through your crown and that energy center right there. And that is a good way to extend the naturally calming energy. Um, this is sort of a, you know, you know, let's say, you know, so a good example might be when, when, when would you do this? Right? So for just the alternate breathing technique or, um, a good, uh, or let's say, you know, well, let me, well, let me back up. When, when would you do eat, eat any of these, you know, so let's, let's break this down into just the, you know, longer exhalation than the inhalation versus just the alternate nostril breathing versus alternate nostril breathing and this chakra telescope technique, right? When would you do each of these? So the, uh, long, slow breathing thing, you can do that at, at, at almost any time. The only time that I wouldn't recommend doing it is when you absolutely need your concentration. And that would be moments like when you're, um, let's say running in an unfamiliar territory, um, or if you're, you know, using, let's say weight machines, don't 
don't do something like that because that's that your risk of injury is already ready uh, already relatively high so you don't want to make that um you don't want to increase your risk of any kind of injury um but at any rate but other than that you can do it anytime you're stressed it's very easy to do um one of the things i would uh suggest to plan uh, to do is plan ahead so if you know that something stressful is coming up let's say you're about to enter an athletic competition let's say you are you have to give a big speech and you're you get nervous with public speaking let's say um you're you're about to let's say go on a, a date with somebody who you kind of like and you already know you tend to get nervous on dates anything like that um the that would be a great time to in private way beforehand maybe spend about five or ten minutes just doing e this long slow breathing technique and you could also do like an alternate nostril breathing technique either one of those um but the so the need for that is there and it, obviously if you couldn't do the alternate nostril you could just do the the extended uh, exhalation uh, version of that but one of the things I would want to say is if you're around people who uh, observe you doing this, you want to be a little bit careful about the way you go about it. I'm not saying not do it. I'm saying it, do it differently. So if you know, you're in a social situation and somebody, let's say, has upset you in some way and you really want to calm down, um, you know, obviously it might be a little bit embarrassing if you go into the corner and then, you know, are practicing this technique, you know, everybody's, that's going to like have downstream effects. So what I would suggest is not to not do it, but to be careful about how you're doing it. Right. So if I'm, if I'm inhaling, inhaling and exhaling like this. It's pretty obvious, <laughs> but if you're, you know, much more subtle about it, if you just, you can't really tell that I'm doing it, can you? But I've been, I'm doing it right then and there. So, um, this is, a uh, part of a larger issue about how it's a good idea in, uh, especially in Western societies to become more comfortable with pauses, you know, cause we're always, uh, you know, at least speaking as an American, you know, there's a, you know, to quote that old twilight zone episode, push, push, push all the way. You know, there's that sort of, uh, mentality. Um, so I don't recommend, uh, so, and, and for that reason, you know, people might, you know, tease you about that. So my recommendation is to just be more subtle about it. Um, so if it's in the immediate moment like that, go ahead and like learn how to do it subtly, um, you know, and just, you know, do it so that, you know, people don't call you on it necessarily. You may need to say, just give me a minute to think about that or something. And then, you know, just practice that technique. You know, they don't need to know that you're, you're just calming your nervous system. You just, you know, who cares, you know, um, so at any rate, uh, so that's, that would be like the first technique. Obviously I do recommend that if you're, you know, in to prepare for something, the alternate nostril version of this is going to be much easier when you know you have something coming up. So planning ahead like that, or if you're with a bunch of people who also are into this sort of technique. Okay. So lastly, I would recommend um, that final technique where it's, you know, you could either do alternate nostril or just, you know, the, you know, longer exhalation, no, not messing with your nostrils at all. But anytime you're integrating the, this chakra visualization, I would really recommend that. Th that one in particular, I would say pair that up as best you can or alternate that on alternate days, whatever you want to do, mornings and evenings, however. Pair that one up with um, your... Uh, with with planning uh, with 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 a more dedicated meditation practice, um, you know something where you are a little bit more secluded, or if you're let's say you're in a in a crowd and nobody really is like paying attention to you, 
You can definitely get away, you can't get away with the alternate nostril thing, but you can do that visualization and nobody, nobody would be the wiser. Um, I wouldn't say, you know, I, nobody's telling you to, uh, I'm not advocating anybody not pay attention during a meeting or a boring, you know, school function or whatever the case may be. Um, but, uh, you know, um, but it's something that you can do and people aren't going to know. And especially, that'll especially work if people aren't, if you don't anticipate people trying to capture your attention and you'll be surprised at, at what you find, you know, that's really, it, it really is a bit of my, my go-to, um, meditation practice. Um, and for those of you who are kind of into it, well, why is that? It's, you know, you're using your, you know, you know, the third eye is, you know, writ large, like psychic center, chakra center is in touch with your heart, you know, that core of who you are and that, especially if your heart, if you've managed to learn how to soften your heart, you know, what's important to you, your values, what you care about, your, your center for caring. You're using that, you're engaging your mind with that um, core of yourself and you're extending what you are in touch with internally with more of like a collective experience and your, your care for other people. So that's the technique. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. I will do my best to answer it. Um, I hope it works out for you. Uh, and obviously, I, I'm, I'm obviously more than open to somebody leaving an improved improvement to the technique. I think we're all just trying to teach and learn from each other. So uh, anyway, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, evening, morning, whatever the case may be. Uh, just take it easy. All right. Thanks so much.